Hello everyone. Today we are going to see the SQLize ORM. So this is basically a promise based Node.js ORM for this Postgres database, MySQL database, kind of SQLite, MariaDB or MySQL. This is very useful when you will be connecting to this database and in case you need to change this database from one to another somewhere, you will just need to just need to change the configuration that's all you will not need to do anything else and this will be very useful uh, to configure in node js also so let's look into this one all these things so basically this is the old code base uh, we were working and we're going to install this with this one we will also need mysql2 because i'm going to use mysql database for now so here's the database mysql we have a db created SQLize, but it don't have any table inside this as of now as you can see it's a blank db only but now let's start with changing the db configuration so we have mongodb here so not required now we're going to need the database configuration for SQLize. so let's go to the documentation and we can get the code from there so first things we need to import the SQLize. So let's do this and with this one we are going to configure the database connection so we are going to use this one for that the sqlize database username database is the name of the database in my case sqlize so let me add that one my username is the root for the database and password is plan in this case host is localhost and in my case I use the database for my sql so that's the database configuration here now what you're going to need, we need to connect to the database. First we have to authenticate. We can use this one, obviously you can copy this one also or you can use the promise base. Let me use the promise here. So we'll do db.sqlize.authenticate. Uh, it will have one then. That is the configuration, it will be connected now. Let's import this one in our app chains. So mongoose was currently not required, so remove this. So TV is connected here and we are going to write the code here but before that remove this mongoose. Okay, let's come to this part. DB equal is done. Now let's try to start this one. Okay, my SQL does not been installed so let me install this one. DB is connected. That's awesome. Now let's move to the next step. Create a constant here, DB. And inside that DB, what we're going to do, we're going to write db.sqlize equal to the sqlize one. We're going to assign this one, and here finally we're going to export this one. What you did export DB. We're going to sync the database and then we're going to move to our user user configuration user model basically so remember we have to use the user model here this one in case of mongoose so uh, currently remove this one mongoose sequencing we no need all these things remove everything else okay and this one also instead we are going to do module.export from here data types will be used to create this schema let's start with this one and user schema is here and at the end we need to return this one now mongoose.schema will not need now what will do sqlize dot and for this one dot define i don't use sqlize dot define id is not required name so required properties are also not good let's yes remove all these things so type type will be data type start string like this one copy it or everyone will have string email is also string and password is also string property so this is okay now what we're going to do we'll basically import this user schema user model in our db file we'll import the data type here as well so that's here and now we are good to do the sync so we can do db.sqlize.sync 
and true or false so if I, if i do and if i do false true it is going to truncate the table and then it will recreate that one now let's see what is the error we are getting so we need to pass the table name in our case to be users here So you can see the drop table it exists. It is there. So if we have any data in the database, it will delete that one first. Then we're going to create this table. So this is the one. We if you insert some data here, let's say I'm going to insert one data. So now if we refresh this one again, it is start and start this one again. So now you can see we have the table, user table, but it's empty. Right? This is for this one. To make it false, it will not do that. So let's go with the false then. Now our setup is done. Now what we need to do now? Let's go to our register page. So let's go to register page. This is the register section, and here what we're going to do? We'll try to create the user. So you know, if you've seen the previous videos. You will know that if you click on submit, the control will come to the come to the create user route, the post user, and from there it will come to this controller section and user control, and it will come to the add user section. Here we need to make few changes, not much changes, but some changes. So first things we need to import the DB here. Now create one constant DB dot user. That's all. DB dot user we got it. So add here. So add user here. This one user dot find. It will have a find all, and we can add a where property also. So other things are all right now. If it's the user is available in that case, it will show the message use email already. Exist. If it's not available, we are going to create the user right. So then I will creating new constant new user and hashing the password. Now setting a new password, the hashed one in the, the new user object. Now what we're going to do, we will just do user dot not save, it will be create. Great. Now here we need to pass the properties. So we can pass like name. We have new user dot name, then email is new user dot email and in the password is same. So new password is the hash one. This one. Okay. So it should be good now. After login, it will after registration, it will direct to the login page. Otherwise, it will send. Um, it will it will send the error message. <coughs> Let's see. Okay. Now register one user here. Let's we we'll look in the database. Okay, the table is empty. Now hit the save submit button. It is taking us to the login page, so it should be created now. Yeah. We have one data got created, and this is the big JS is also working. <coughs> so that's the way the registration section would work. Let me create another user. Phrase dot test dot com. Save it. Let's see. Okay, so the registration is done. Now the login section. So you know, the in case of login, control will come. In this part, check login, and basically it will going to use the local strategy from the passport JS. So let's go to the passport JS and change it here. User is not uh, user is not the same one now. I'll import the DB. It will be inside the same folder. So just dot slash DB. That's one and create the user here. DB dot user. We got the DB uh, the user object here, and here only the find by ID. In the case of deserializing user, find by ID is not present, so find by primary key. And we have ID is the primary key. It returns a promise. So I'm going to use then. Let's try to log in with this user. Okay, it is working. To ensure what we'll do, we'll give some different password. 
okay passed was not correct so that's the way we can do the sqlize implementation and that's very useful hopefully you understand let's see the benefit of using sqlize we have seen that we have connected to mysql database and we have done all sort of login logout and uh, registration kind of things now say the requirement is to change the database from mysql to say sqlite so we'll have to install the sqlite in our system and in this case here we need to add sqlite 3 and then we will also add the path of our database say i'll create a database folder inside my project so let's go here create new folder database and here let's open the command line and here we're going to create the database so slide 3 dot db sqlize dot db this will create the db the file we cannot see it uh, by default so if we do dot databases now it's visible so the size of this file is zero now i have nothing in this file if we open this file in the sqlite manager that's a chrome plugin i have installed so it will have no table inside it currently but now let's try to access the application from the pages so let's see we are seeing some error here so let's see it will be storage not db path and here we can give the name of our file so sqlite dot db db name is sqlite so that is done from the configuration set. now let's open our command prompt here let's open this one okay i think it created the table already the user table inside the database let's see if you can see the size it's already 12 kb right so the database is already there now let's go to the application and try to register one user there so the same user will try to register and it is working properly i think let's try to open this one okay as you can see we have the data already entered here now let's go back there and create a new completely new user so say user sam at the rate in gmail.com and give any password hit the submit and this is done let's come here let's open this one now, this user is already entered here now if you try to log in with say sam at the rate gmail.com and password was one so this is working properly right so if you use same user different password it is not going to work say so this is the use that's uh, yeah we have seen like how easily we can change the database with at least um, this is a very basic application but yet we didn't make any changes except in this file the configuration change sql is, is capable of handling all those changes so that's the major benefit you will get using sql lines so that's all for this video thank you for watching this hopefully this will be uh, this will be interesting for you